down under, which once each year becomes the land of thunder. The Champ Cars are back in Surfer's Paradise for the biggest party of the season to enjoy the sun, surf, and Sheila's, and maybe, just maybe, to crown a champion. A year ago, Surfer's was anything but a paradise as a two-year drought ended with a soaking rain that turned the race into a frightening fight for survival. The eventual winner was appropriately surprising, rookie Mario Dominguez becoming the 12th different winner in Surfer's. That string of new faces atop the podium has been unbroken for as long as the champ cars have raced here. It also matches the precise number of years that Paul Tracy has been chasing his first champ car title. Today, the Canadian has that championship within his grasp. Tracy's best season ever has seen him home first a series high seven times. A podium finish here at Surfers would complete the picture and the party will be off the hook. was very much the story of the champ car visit to surfers paradise australia last year and it might be again we have a strong threat of rain but the cars are on track let's get right to it at the lexmark 300 round 18 of the bridgestone presents the champ car world series powered by ford for 2003. here is how the championship stands coming in a first or second place finish for paul tracy the points leader and he will be champion no matter what bruno Junquera does as for the Brazilian, he must end the day no more than 21 points behind Tracy if he hopes to take the title fight to the final round of the season next weekend in California. Hello, everyone. I'm Bob Varsha, along with Tommy Kendall and Derek Daly. Let's quickly bring you up to date on what's happened thus far in Serbia. That is the collection of Tommy Kendall's girlfriends. That is Dara Manning playing the customary volleyball game on the beach. And the man in the hat is Dario Franchitti. Then the series just started Friday morning and all eyes on Paul Tracy because his rival Bruno Junquera trying to work out how to get enough points this weekend. Tracy has made a point in every session to get out ahead of Junquera just to show him what it might be like for the rest of the weekend. Out first or not, it didn't matter in Friday qualifying. Watch Bruno attack the curve in the fast chicane. Really showing Paul Tracy how it was done. Left him kind of talking to himself. 1.4 seconds clear after Friday's first round. But Paul wasn't even a threat for second, third. Ended up fourth on the day. Watch him struggle here under breaking, entering the first chicane on the back side. So Bruno took care of needing every single point he could. Got the one that was available on Friday. I mean, it's important to get the front row, and it's important to get the point, even the difference is big, but I mean, I have to try to do my best. I mean, I have to get the maximum point that I can and see what's happening for Tracy, and I hope I'll have a shot on the championship for the last race in Fontana. Uh, it just wasn't very good overall. I'm just, the car was not good. It didn't want to break well. It uh, didn't want to go over the curbs that well, so we got a ways to, to go to get closer, so. You know, it's going to be a fight. And here's how they'll line up as we check our starting grid powered like the champ cars by Ford. On pole for the fifth time this year, Sebastian Bourdais hopes to become the first rookie to win this race for pole since Nigel Mansell in 1993. As for Bruno Jancara, he knows, as do you, what he must do this weekend. On row two, Paul Tracy must just finish ahead of Jancara to clinch. Alex Tagliani was second fastest in Friday's first round of qualifying, but was underweight in post-session tech. On row three, Adrian Fernandez, the 2000 winner, badly injured in a wreck in this race a year ago, while Oriol Serbia has been getting quicker as the weekend goes on. On row four, Roberto Moreno and his teammate Mario Dominguez still flying high after their 1-2 finish in Miami a few weeks ago. On row five, Michelle Jourdain picked up neither bonus point in qualifying and was thus mathematically eliminated from the championship. Well, Formula One veteran Mika Salo has his best qualifying performance in his first season, equaling the best for the PK Racing team. Here's a look through the rest of the field. Ryan hunter Ray in 12th, the fastest Reynard, Tiago Montero in a backup car after a crash on Saturday, and Jimmy Vassar, the only driver not to improve from first to second round qualifying, sixth in session one, but an electrical fire in session two. 
on to the long front straightaway they come and look at that packed formation Junkera jumping ahead of his teammate the pole sitter and it is waved off I'll tell you what that was definitely a team job where you had Bruno on the gas Sebastian on the brakes hey Sebastian don't make it so blatant next time because he actually blocked Tracy you could see Tracy's frustration there I mean, don't make it so blatant next time that you're going to let your teammate just run away with this thing. So they'll take it around again, and that lap will count. The first of 65 laps scheduled around this two-point, call it 2.8-mile racetrack, 12 official turns. Very warm weekend thus far, though the heavy clouds overhead have cooled it down, but we have a strong threat of rain. In fact, we're getting reports from other parts of Surfer's Paradise that there is rain falling, although the track is dry right now. The mandatory pit interval for this race, 18 laps, making it a three-stop race. And here are the windows. They will open on laps 11, 29, and 47, close on laps 18, 36, and 54. By those latter numbers, you must stop for a four-tire stop. Four tires that were not on the car when you came in, plus, of course, the all-important methanol. Those are our Bridgestone keys to the race. Now we're getting reports that this man, Adrian Fernandez, who was hurt so badly in that nine car pileup in the rain a year ago, his car may be smoking. And Bob, at this stage, Paul Tracy clearly now knows there is team orders that he's gonna have to battle against. And Tommy, you've spoken to Paul many times this weekend. Can he, can he sustain the frustration of a two man team that he now knows is clearly out to block him if necessary. Well, we, we saw at Miami where it wasn't as blatant as what we just saw there, and he didn't deal with it very well, but I think that was probably a pretty important experience for him. He got away cheaply because Bruno made a mistake later in that race. Coming into this race, things are a lot better for Paul. There really isn't a lot of pressure. Even if things aren't going quite his way, he knows that um, they've got things pretty well in hand, but be interesting to see. Look how close he is there to Bruno. Off the final corner they come. The top six cars in the warm-up, Sebastian Bourdais, Adrian Fernandez, Bruno Jacquera, Ryan hunter Ray, the rookie, Alex Tagliani, and Paul Tracy. Watch for Junquera. At the start, this time we have a green flag, and Bourdais will allow his teammate into the lead. Let's see who else tries to take advantage. Paul Tracy goes up oh, and gets spun. Spun by contact with Bourdais. Well, well, well. That, that is hard to believe that we just saw that. And Oriol Servia has gone around as well. Full course yellow. Yellow flags come out. There is Servia. And it appears he is done. Okay. Why does he believe he's, he's done? Does he, has he got broken suspension that we, we haven't seen? Our host broadcaster for the weekend is Australian Network 10. With some three dozen cameras at work this weekend and an army of 220 or so people. Paul Tracy obviously is back underway. Let's take a look at some replays. That's Tiago Montero ahead of Tracy. I wonder if Montero got together with Oriol. So remember, Tracy was third on the grid. He is ahead of Bourdais as he turns in. Bourdais doesn't give him enough room. Right wheel, front Bourdais, left wheel, Tracy. And Look Paul at all the cars that straight line that chicane. Any other race or any other situation, okay, another look at it. In front of these two cars, Fernandez, and Tagliani. Oh, ah, oh okay. there's yeah, yeah, yeah. why Oriole yeah, yeah, was yeah, finished. Yeah. yeah. Another look. There's Oriole to the left of your picture, getting clouded by Fernandez. While well, Tracy spins in, appears to be unharmed. Yes, yeah, Servia and Fernandez were on the same row. Fifth for Fernandez, sixth for Servia. Here it is here. Oh. Uh, Tommy, I don't know. PT didn't have enough uh, didn't certainly, have enough room to turn certainly left. Certainly was not clear. No, it was not clear. Bourdais had nowhere to go. I wonder if Bourdais damaged his front wing. 
Well, it's certainly been an eventful racetrack for Paul Tracy. Back in 1995, here he is passing Michael Andretti at the height of their rivalry. And from there, Paul Tracy went on to win here in Surfers, one of 12 different drivers to win the first 12 runnings of this race. Still the young thrill from West Hill. In 1997, this was Paul Tracy doing battle with Alex Zanardi. <laughs> Tossing cones aside left and right in the chicanes. In a great battle, Zanardi eventually got the drop on Tracy down in turn two, ducked inside. Tracy tried to respond. The two touched wheels. Zanardi continued, but Tracy was finished. Then 2000, battling with Oriol Servia. Tracy going over the chicanes. Servia trying to take advantage. Result, as you might suspect, upper left corner of your screen was tears. The stats back it up. Paul Tracy has qualified in the top five his last seven times here. Has only make it eight with this with this year, but has only finished in the points twice. His average finish in 10 previous runnings, 14 plus. That does not bode well for Paul Tracy's chances of locking up his first career champ car title this weekend. Hard to believe no driver has ever won this race more than one time. It is one of the most spectacular street races in all of motor racing. Wait till you see them come through these chicanes here and over these curves at speed. Even on television, it's absolutely spectacular. It's all part of the lore of this race. How about Michael Andretti coming back from his year at Formula One in the brand new, never been in champ cars before, Raynard chassis and winning here in Australia. That yep. year, the car was like a Sherman tank. He hit everything and everybody, and including launched the car, and including hit the tire wall, and he still managed to win. Pace car is off in front of an incredible throng here this weekend, well over 100,000 people. We are back underway, and race control says none of those cars that straight line the chicane on the, first, on the second lap, first green flag lap, will be penalized. They were all ruled to have been avoiding the carnage on the track. And here comes Tracy. Meanwhile, Bruno Jacquera out front doing just what he needs to do to try to take the title fight to the season finale next week in California. And Tracy is now livid. He is now blaming the team. He's now blaming Bourdais. He's blaming anybody and everybody. His eyes will be out on stalks now as he comes from the back, trying to make up as many places as he can. Bruno, of course, is going to have the advantage here because he's also going to chase another bonus point, Bob, and that is for the driver who leads the most laps will also get a bonus championship point. And that's why the fix was in from the very start with Newman Haas wanting Bruno to lead at the start was to chase that most laps led bonus point. There is Tiago Montero driving for the Fittipaldi Dingman team. We saw him running around at the back with Tracy. He has pulled off the course. Alex Tagliani. Large number of guests here for his sponsor, Johnson Controls, who I know recently in the Wall Street Journal, Johnson Controls just announced very high profits this year. Big boost for that company. Tag had a disappointing day, day Friday, ran right at the front of qualifying, disqualified for the car being underweight. That has happened uh, several times this year. Once I know to Vassar or to uh, Ryan Hunter Ray, I know it happened to Jordan earlier at Laguna Seca. They fixed it with tag. It, it happens so easy because you change a set of wheels and the weights are different. But however, he came back to qualify all the way up in the fourth place, now running third. And Derek, you talked about the chicanes and how much the drivers are up on the curves. If it looks like they're using the curves 
more this year than ever, you're right. They have taken off, there, there used to be a second step of, of curbs on top of those curbs, which kept the guys, other than in qualifying, when they didn't care what happened to the bottom of the car, from really straight lining it. Those have gone away, and that's what Bruno figured out earlier than everybody else on first round qualifying. I talked to Paul this morning, and he was 25 miles an hour quicker through the fast chicane than he was last year. Every <laughs> chicane on the front straight is third gear. The one on the, on the back straight is fourth gear instead of third. So a gear higher through all the chicanes as a result of the lower curbing. Okay, but that was after Junquera told Tracy the quick way is to stay off the curbs completely. So the head game started pretty early on Friday. Well, in, in the post-qualifying press conference, uh, Paul says, I asked Bruno, should I get on the curbs? And Bruno says, no, stay around him. And Paul didn't mind. He says, I didn't mind because I was peeing on his shoes. They were in the restroom at the time. So, um, and he says that's what gave Bruno his bad luck on Saturday qualifying. <laughs> nice, huh? The How's unfair that advantage. That stay off of my blue suede shoes. Uh-huh. Something like that. Down the long front straightaway on the longest street circuit on the Champ Car Tour, 2.8 miles. Paul Tracy is now up to 13th. That's one place out of the points as he desperately tries to minimize the damage of his early race spin. We'll take a quick break and return live to Surface Paradise here on Speed Channel. Welcome back to Surfers Paradise Australia on the eastern Gold Coast, about an hour's drive south of Brisbane. Let's take a closer look at the racetrack, gentlemen. And you wonder what makes a racetrack where there's no repeat winners, but yet all the guys rave about it. It's the longest street course on the circuit, a series of four high-speed chicanes. One, two, five, and the six, seven complex really are what defines this racetrack. Very high speed, but relatively high grip by street course standards. Turn 11, obviously very important for the shot onto the front straightaway. I'm Bob Varsha along with Tommy Kendall, Derek Daly. Glad to have you with us here on Speed Channel. Sadly, this weekend, we're not working with pit reporters. We'll try to keep you up to date on everything happening in Surfer's Paradise. We're looking at the race leader, Bruno Giancara, who qualified alongside his Newman Haas teammate, Sebastian Bourdais. And then in a bit of team tactics, he was allowed by his teammate to jump into the lead where he has remained, looking for the bonus championship point for most laps led, and he desperately needs the 20 points for winning the race. And then Paul Tracy got in trouble at that first chicane. And we had a little look earlier on. We want to show this to you again, Tommy, because on the overhead, you can see Tracy turns in right here. Tommy, it, it doesn't look as if he cleared him, does Well, he it? didn't clear him. No, absolutely not. The thing is, if that if this was any other race or any other cars, Bruno's going to back out of there because he knows he's not going to make the pass there. But that's exactly why Paul needs to consider that and allow for that. That's very predictable that he's going to do that. You can, you can easily defend that as, hey, it was racing. I was partially alongside. But given the circumstances, I've never seen a second car enter a championship. You always talk about a guy playing a role and Newman Haas and Bourdais have done it. They goaded Paul into a big mistake at Miami here. They put themselves in a situation where technically Paul can say, you know what, I was mostly clear, but you can't say it was totally him taking him out. It was, you can argue it was a racing incident. Very, very heads up stuff by Sebastian Bourdais. Not exactly tidy, but heads up. And across our scoring monitor, we just saw there's an inquiry into this man here, number two, Sebastian Bourdais, inquiring, was it an unjustifiable risk? I don't think from that overhead shot that you can say that Bourdais did anything intentionally because you can clearly see Tracy cut across and Bourdais already there. But hey, even if they do, I mean, it's already paid off. If, if he comes in the pits, he's locked up rookie of the year, he'd like to go for third in the points, but really what matters is trying to optimize Bruno's day, and they've done that. Now, if you think Tracy's on the charge, let's just have a look at one of his passes and listen also. Need a real time. Well, what we're missing here by not running this in real time was the sheer aggression that Paul Tracy exhibited going flashing by Darren Manning in the braking zone for the far end of the racetrack down there at turn eight. He, ha he had wheel spin, he, ha he was on the rev limiter, he was offline, he was doing everything. And Tracy right now, as fast as lap of the race, is a 96 uh, second, 96.4. 
Uh, fastest lap by Junquera at the moment is 96.5. So Tracy looks, now Bourdais is actually set fastest lap of the race so far, but look at Tracy, already in the picture, top of your screen there, almost up with his teammate. Look at the crowd gathered here on Thursday when the champ cars did not run. In fact, virtually no race cars were on track. There were over 50,000 people here. On Friday, more than 60,000 for the first round of qualifying. On Saturday, 83, 000, almost 84,000 fans. And today, no doubt, more than 100,000 for the biggest sports event in Eastern Australia each year. Now, the word from race control is they've examined all of the events of that first green flag lap, and there will be no penalties. Good. Good. Good decision. And here's the rest of the bad news. We are told there is a large thunderstorm west of Surfer's Paradise and headed this way. Once again, here's a look at the pit windows. On the next lap, the first of an anticipated three mandatory pit stops will open. Make a solo here, and I would not be surprised if uh, the players for the PF Racing, takes me a while to get used to saying that, the PF Racing team might call Paul Tracy in. He's shown he has the speed, and that would be a chance he would have some, uh, some unimpeded track runs to try to work his way up through the order. On board with Mika Salo, who has been climbing straight up the learning curve, getting better with each race. Jumped in at the deep end of the champ cars in Denver, then raced superbly on an equally tricky course in Miami. Mexico City came forward to finish in the top 10. Now here he is racing hard in surfers. And he said his mission this weekend is to give Kevin Kalkovan the podium finish that he's been asking for here. Of course, Kevin Kalkovan is a native Australian. So this event probably means more to Kevin than any event this year so far. Born in Adelaide. I've got to say, I mean, it didn't matter, seem to matter who they had in the car early on. The results were about the same. And early on, same held true for Salo. But they have definitely been making improvements on this team. And so I think what that tells me is all those guys that were driving the car were quick. But for whatever reason, Salo's been able to actually get the car developed uh, and, and bring things forward. And they, they even made engineering changes, Tommy. Remember, they brought in John Ward to see would that be the missing link and he struggled also with the chemistry with some of the drivers but John Ward now and Mika Salo definitely seem to have a, a chemistry here they understand each other and that car goes faster as a result of that Sebastian Bourdais flashing through those chicanes the curbing has been lowered in those chicanes so the drivers are using them more than ever but we understand there are reports of raindrops on the back half of the racetrack. No sign of that yet from our Network 10 cameras. Rona Jankara flashing through the final two corners, 11 and 12, onto the start finish straightaway. Pit stops coming up shortly. Try to get you back for that. You won't miss a thing. We'll be back to the streets of Surfers Paradise in just a moment. Welcome back to the streets of Surfers Paradise. Just seconds ago, this was Sebastian Bourdais and swinging through in second place and clouding the wall. And watch the traffic jam behind him. Tag is in the middle of the smoke. He virtually comes to a standstill, as does Fernandez, Dominguez, and Moreno. I don't believe anybody is the team led by Craig Hampson there and Kathy uh, Lauterbach look on and just in horror and shock at what just suddenly happened. I wonder if the rain that was starting to fall had anything to do with that. Look, long after Bourdais has hit the wall, he still got his foot buried on the throttle. I wonder, I wonder if the throttle stuck after he hit the wall. It's possible. You see, the right rear was destroyed, but the left rear kept spinning. Now what? Okay, it's, as soon as he comes off the curb, the car gets sideways. Look, look at, at Tag. Alex, yeah, he's tag. trying to pick away and he can't. He, now, Tom, uh, the throttle stuck. Tommy, look. Left rear just keeps going. Actually, as you saw Bourdais come over that curve and get sideways, about a second earlier, Junquera, I believe, had almost the same type of squirrely 
attitude coming off the corner. Now they're ready. Rain tires. Rain tires in the pit lane. There's Bourdais. For sure, it, it, it was a wet surface that caught him out. You saw just how dark it was okay. overhead. Okay, watch Junkera, Tommy. Bruno coming off the curb. There it is. Oh. Okay, he just gets away with this. And Bourdais, right of your screen, gets it sideways. Oh, now it's too far. Now we know he's going to kiss the concrete. Boom, right oh. there. Just destroyed that right side. Here comes Tag. He comes through straight. He's on the brakes now. Fernandez, Dominguez, Tag's all over the place. Saw so Fernandez get sideways at that same part of the racetrack that nearly caught Bruno Jacquera and ended Sebastian Bourdais' race. Okay, oh, and boys, now it yeah. is raining. Hang on to your hollyhocks. Things just changed. And on slick tires in rain like this, it is hard to even go at pace car speed. Remember last year we saw Christian Damata spin behind the pace car. It's Earl a good Haas. thing that Paul Tracy did not come in on lap 11 when the window had opened. Yeah. And that might have factored into the decision when they saw the rain come in. If he had come in and put more slicks on, he would have been at the back of the queue and everybody would have gotten a freebie here to go to Reigns and he would have had to do the same. Wow. Bob, last year, how, how long was the drought and rain came on race day? Two years. And yeah. The champ cars brought it to an end in the biggest possible way and in the most bizarre way because the V8 supercars, the Australia's national series, if you will, ran in perfect conditions. Then the clouds open. The champ car race was a complete debacle. And a couple hours after it was over, the skies cleared. There is Patrick Carpentier. There is Paul Tracy. Manning, Manning, I believe, just came on the radio and said his decision will be to stay on on slick tires. But look at the rain. It's beginning to come down in sheets here. He can't possibly. No, no. Manning will change his mind by the time he gets around here. Oh, absolutely. I was about to say, it looked like it wasn't raining quite as hard on the back side, but I think Manning might be thinking it's going to end sometime soon. But at the rate it's falling, it's going to get so wet. I stood in that pit lane for hours and hours last year. And when it rains, I mean, it just comes down in sheets. I meant to tell you, you did a great job last year. Did I ever do that? <laughs> yeah. Jeff I, Boss had an interesting first round of qualifying. Well, in fact, he had no first round of qualifying. He crashed in Friday practice. And the car was not back together in time for him to go out and essentially learn the racetrack. The same fate befell Rodolfo Levine from Walker Racing in the Corona car. His problem was a mechanical one. He had problems with the gearbox. He only got a couple of laps in in practice. And he decided he just did not know the track well enough to go out there without being a danger to everybody else. Okay, here we go. Now, there really is no gamble here, Tommy, is there? I mean, it's just, you, no, no, it's just coming down too much. Let's make sure everybody gets stopped. Shot by Bruno. Notice the flame from the exhaust. Which is an indication how dark the clouds are, because when you... Okay, got Bruno out nicely. Fernandez is in second, right behind him. If Bruno let, let the pack tag, had a bad stop. The upper left, Fernandez and Dominguez each gained a spot. That's what the green arrowhead means. Tagliani lost one. Jordan picked one up. Moreno lost one. Salo and Tracy moved up one or more. Carpentier and Hunter Ray lost position. Tracy actually moved up two by Hunter Ray and Carpentier. So while the rain begins to fall once again, and we all go through a very thick case of deja vu, we'll be back to Surfer's Paradise in just a moment. Welcome back to Surfer's Paradise Australia that has been absolutely inundated with a cloudburst and hail bouncing around this 2.795 mile circuit. Bob Marsha, Tommy Kendall, Derek Daly with you all going through a definite sense of having been here before. Look at that rainfall. Goalie washers, Bob. Is that what you call it? Frog swallowers. <laughs> there you go. All of the above. How could it change that fast? Three laps earlier, it's perfectly dry, you race hard, and suddenly you have rain and hail. You know, 
a weird way, I kind of enjoyed last year's race. It was just, it was so uncertain, and because there was all that uncertainty in the reins and the rules, no one knew what was going to happen, and so it just kept unfolding in a wacky way. I'm, I didn't mean I wanted to go through it again, though. Now, the difficulty here is because of the history of the event last year, there's a real challenge here as to what you do, Bob, and how, and yeah, and, and what flag you use. Well, the one they're going to use right now is red. Look at that. Hail. Look. All oh, hail. Champ cars. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh. It was those jets flying over. Destroyed the atmosphere. That's right. The Royal Australian Air Force came by with another absolutely dynamite air show, including the dump and burn, which a big F-111 goes along, dumps raw fuel into its afterburners and emits this huge trail of fire. Maybe that's what broke the clouds. Now, that rain is worse than last year, I'll tell you right now. That is worse than last year. You've got to hire out as rainmakers. Just take the series anywhere there's a persistent drought. <laughs> you couldn't script this. Look at it come down. Alex Tagliani. Teams cannot work on the cars. Let's even download data. There's the Higante crew for Michelle Jourdain Jr. and Team Ray Hall. And there is Michelle. You can hear the hail. Look at the hill. Yeah, <laughs> look at this. As we've said many times, Thomas. Well, well, well. <laughs> can you believe this? Well, I. S in an interesting twist, after last year, they realized there were some uh, some possibilities that could happen that were not considered in the rule book, and that's what caused all the uh, the drama last year to continue. They couldn't stop the race before halfway. They weren't sure how it affected the pit windows, so forth and so on. They cleared that part of the rule, those part of the rules up, and gave the, given the stewards the ability to call the race before halfway and still award points, maybe even award half points. Now, the irony there is if they were to stop the race now and award half points, I, I believe Bruno Juncker would be a half a point away from being eliminated. Whereas if it goes full distance, he would be, he would put 12, you know, pull 12 points in on Paul Tracy. It would only be 13 points. It would only be six and a half if they stop at halfway. Well. Let's hope the need to start working on fractions doesn't arise. We are under a red flag after three full course cautions here at Surfer's Paradise. Stay with us. We'll be here straight through. Welcome back to Surfer's Paradise. A year ago, the champ cars traveled around the opening laps behind a safety car due to the amount of water on the track. Eventually, they tried to start the race and quickly it all went wrong. A massive nine car pileup. Jimmy Vassu's car flipped on its roll hoop while Tora Takagi's machine bounced atop that of Adrian Fernandez, leaving the Mexican driver with two cracked vertebra, the worst incident. The pictures from Michael Andretti's onboard camera said it all. These were some of the most frightening pictures that we saw last year. Eventually, the race was restarted, but only to run behind the pace car. Eventually, just past halfway, it was called. Mario Dominguez declared the winner in a very controversial circumstance. Now back to live coverage. There's Jimmy Vassar, Paul Tracy to the far right, partly obscured by Tony Sicali, his engineer. Out of their cars, waiting for a further decision from the champ car officials. Now. We're getting word from race control that the sky is lightening again to the west, the direction the storm came from. So hopefully within a short while, the rain will let up. The hail appears to have stopped. As everyone talks it over. Here's a look at our top ten. Bruno Jancara, Michel Jourdain, and Patrick Carpentier. Then the rookie Ryan Hunter Ray and Mika Salo. This running order determined after the first pit stops. Now, although that is on the scoring monitor officially by card, I don't believe that is the actual running order because 
they've stopped in the pit lane without going across the timing stripe because Fernandez, I believe, is second. Uh, should be up there. Tag well. is up there in about fourth. Jourdain, who's shown in, shown in second, in reality on the racetrack, or the pit lane, is back in at least fifth place. But well, that'll all sort itself out as soon as they just drive There's down the, the pit sky. lane one now, time. Look at this. Now, you just saw a camera turning basically 180 degrees. Looking to the north, it looked like it was going to rain forever. This is looking to the south into the town of Surfer's Paradise. And look at the skies. So hopefully that bows well for the race. See a little sunlight in the distance there. Hopefully the rain will stop shortly. Now, there was a lot of discussion going on. I saw someone from the Higante team down in the players pit and there was a lot of discussion going back and forth since you're sitting right next to me Derek I can't get on the headset and ask you to go down there and uh, check that out uh, I could you have Paul's cell phone number you want to just call him there my he might have in his pocket why don't we do that <laughs> it's hard to believe last year that was a two-year drought and we had rain on race day I it probably hasn't rained in surface paradise since uh, last year most of these guys went down more than a week early to enjoy the festivities in Surface Paradise, and then we see this type of weather again. Now, we've also changed a rule this year based on what you just talked about, Derek, that you cannot change position in the pits based on where you are pitted at such time as the field rolls through the pits. Recall, we used to have that problem at Mid-Ohio all the time where guys would pit before or after the start-finish line, and that one race that Patrick Carpentier dominated last year he had problems with where he was pitted. The Trans Am Series for the BF Goodrich Tire Cup, make that the Motor Rock Trans Am Series for the BF Goodrich Tire Cup, finishes its season this year in Puerto Rico on a brand new temporary circuit. You can catch that tomorrow live here on Speed Channel, beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And don't forget that we go back to standard time tonight, so be sure to set your clocks back. From Network 10 in Australia, here's a look at the first green flag lap and the incident at turn one that saw Paul Tracy bumped off course by Sebastian Bourdais, while Oriol Servia, off to the left of your screen, was being ushered into the trackside wall. And again, left side, you see Paul turn across in front of Bourdais, had not really cleared him, so there's no blame really left on Bourdais' doorstep. Left side of the screen was Servia, who got squeezed by Fernandez, who saw the incident up ahead of him, got squeezed by him, smashed the front suspension on the right side off the wall. So Servia had a short day today. But it hasn't been a total loss for him. This was Oriol Servia checking out the scene at the beach and <laughs> getting a little instruction at what you might call Australia's national sport, surfing. And he said to his expert, now you're sure I'm not going to drown doing this. Is that correct? And she said, maybe. So she's telling him exactly how to do this. So we'll see how much of an expert he becomes on the waves after about five minutes of instruction. Here we go. Uh, uh, uh. For a while it looked I missed like it. we might be short a driver. I, it. I tried. I cannot say I did actually surf. <laughs> I went up and down more than once, and I think I'll leave it to the, to the professionals until I have more time to, to uh, practice a little more. One more look, we'll judge his form. What form? Uh. <laughs> Missed it. Okay, wait, 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 there's another one coming. Oh, but you have to admire the cameraman's audacity. He picks up the babe walking into the picture and immediately goes to sharp focus. That is a true professional. We'll be back to Surfer's Paradise in a moment. It appears to have stopped raining. Welcome back, still under a red flag at Surfers Paradise, but earlier in the weekend, these were the championship contenders, Junkera, Tracy, and Jourdain, being photographed with the Vanderbilt Cup, the embodiment of the championship. Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford. And of course, Jourdain, Bob, was eliminated as soon as he didn't manage to win the bonus point on Friday qualifying. That was the only thing it was going to keep him alive right. in the fight for that Vanderbilt Cup. He didn't need a miracle and did not get it. But either Bruno Junquera or Paul Tracy will win the Cup. Back in 1904, William K. Vanderbilt Jr. wanted to create a major international auto race in the U.S. The Vanderbilt Cup became the prize. Let's take a closer look. 
The cup features an image of Vanderbilt, a champion racer in his own right, driving a 90 horsepower Mercedes to a new record in the flying mile at Ormond Beach, Florida in 1904. The early cup races took place on the roads of Nassau County, Long Island. But in 1936, when the Vanderbilt Cup races were revived, they took place on a four mile dirt road course at Long Island's Roosevelt Raceway. Foreign manufacturers such as Alfa, Maserati, and Bugatti were up against American cars, everything from midgets to millers to re-engineered veterans of the Indianapolis 500. The great Italian Grand Prix star Tazio Nuvolare and his number eight supercharged Alfa dominated the 1936 300 miler, while the best an American could do on this day was number 32, Maury Rose, who finished seventh. Little did anyone know that when Nuvolari took the checkers from starter and Hall of Fame boat racer Gar Wood, there would only be two more races in Vanderbilt Cup history. In 1937, Bert Rosemeyer was victorious in his auto union. Then in 1960, Harry Carter bested drivers such as Jim Rathman, Roger Ward, Jim Hall, Carroll Shelby, and the Rodriguez brothers. For Nuvolari, the 1936 win was his one and only Vanderbilt Cup victory. And the cup that's utilized by CART these days was initially recreated in 1996 to serve as the race winner's trophy at the US 500. Then in 2000, it became the series champion's bobble. Here's a look at that string of non-repeat winners over the years at Surfer's Paradise. Back in 1991, John Andretti took his one and only victory for Jim Hall and his champ car team. Emerson Fittipaldi in 92. 93, Formula One world champion Nigel Mansell, a rookie in the champ cars, came, took pole, won the race. It all seemed so easy. Then Michael Andretti, back from Formula One, gave Reynard a victory in its debut in the champ cars. Paul Tracy won in 95, and as you see from the highlights, Tracy, Vassar, Adrian Fernandez in 2000, who won from 17th on the grid, and Mario Dominguez are all former winners in the field for this year's race. Teams are going about getting the cars ready to restart. Hopefully we'll do that shortly. We'll take a break and return with more live from Surfers Paradise Australia in just a moment. Welcome back to Surfers Paradise Australia. Be sure to check out our speed channel coverage of the FIA World Rally Championship, the Rally Catalunya. Coverage tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Once again, remember, set your clocks back tonight. Most of the United States moves back to standard time. Exceptions being Indiana, Arizona, and Hawaii, if I'm not mistaken. Bob Varsha, Tommy Kendall, and Derek Daly with you. Among the many activities throughout the, the race weekend here at Surfers have been two races from Australia's finest racing series, the V8 Supercars, and Jimmy Vassar had the honor of taking one of these five-liter monsters out on track this weekend. Turned out to be quite the technical challenge, jumping from his champ car to a right-hand drive, meaning left-hand H-pattern shift V8 Supercar. Here is Jimmy buckling in. And make no mistake about it, these V8 supercars are huge in Australia. Network 10 announcers Neil Crompton, himself a former racer, and Matthew White presided. Well, this is probably the worst nightmare of Jimmy Vassar's career because he's jumped out of a champ car, leapt into a V8 supercar. It's a Stone Brothers car driven by Mark Winterbottom. It's a car that's very good, but the bloke in it will be a bit tentative. He's done some NASCAR racing this year, so he has driven some sedans, but it's heavy. He's sitting on the wrong side of the car relative to what Americans know. The gear shift is in his other hand. The whole thing is completely foreign to him, Matty. Be like he's trying to carry a set of weights around while he's doing this, wouldn't it, after what he's been doing earlier on in the day. And Mark oh. Winterbottom is... <laughs> and he has just poked a low gear which will uh, not go down well in Stone Brothers' uh, engine land. Yeah, I don't know who's going to tell him, though. H-pattern gearbox, not a sequential gearbox, like he's accustomed to in the champ car. And uh, it's twice the weight. Oh, he's just missed another one. They're very closely spaced uh, in the gate. It's an H-pattern gearbox. So very, very different to what he's accustomed to. So that's two missed gears and uh, 
I imagine we'll be getting a call from the Stone Brothers after this. Wow, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, really only one time lap. Uh, and shifting with my left is so strange. I, I think I probably destroyed the gearbox. One time I went from second to first and buzzed the engine, and other times I was uh, having a hard time on the down change. Uh, mostly fourth to third, uh, wasn't working. I was or from third to second, I was going from third to fourth, and, and it was clunking, and uh, I, I felt real bad for the mechanics that have to go through this thing after just one lap of my uh, destruction. But I was impressed. The power was nice, real smooth, the brakes were good. It was a lot of fun to drive. Back to live action, you see some of the 1,500 volunteers who helped make the Surfers Paradise Racing Weekend go, trying to clear the last puddles from the racetrack. Word from race control is they will issue a 10-minute warning. They have not done so as yet, but they will issue a 10-minute warning before we send the champ cars back on track. Now, Tommy Kendall, those V8 supercars are absolutely awesome, and you've driven one. What's it like? I drove uh, the Bathurst 1000 with uh, Australian legend Dick Johnson's son, Stephen, and uh, that left-hand shift that Jimmy's talking about is, I don't, I, I never got used to it the whole time. I mean, Jimmy hasn't driven an H-pattern car in, in years, much less with his left hand. I'd been driving an H-pattern all the time. I just switched to my left hand. I can't brush my teeth with my left hand. <laughs> and I had a hell of a time because the H is still the same way. So it's, it'd be like driving in the passenger seat of your car. So when you're when you're downshifting across the gate and you go from third to second, you're having to pull it back and away from you. It's just very unnatural. Uh, but the cars are really pretty cool inside. They're narrower than the Trans Am car. They have kind of a standard dimension, stock dimension bodywork. You can reach and touch both sides of the car from the inside. And they're really pretty nifty, but they're very foreign feeling, sitting on the right side and shifting with the left hand. There are basically two brands involved, Holden, which is a GM brand here in Australia, and Ford, and they do put on a heck of a show. Compared to the Champ car, Jimmy would probably say it didn't handle so well, but at least it, it didn't stop. Or something like that. <laughs> Oh, we have been under a red flag for about 22 minutes. Again, there will be a 10-minute warning so everybody can run to the bathroom before we send the champ cars back on track. While we're on the subject of sedans, Alex Zanardi and his continued miraculous return from that devastating accident two seasons ago in Germany was back in action this weekend. I want to take you back to May at the German 500 where Alex Zanardi climbed into a car with his prosthetic legs buckled on his helmet for the first time in nearly two years and using controls mounted on the steering wheel went out. Wife Daniela looking on along with Alex's former teammate Jimmy Vassar as Zanardi went back on track in a champ car and gave a crowd there in Germany and certainly our broadcast team the thrill of a lifetime. And chills Bob because we expected him to do some easy laps he got onto it as you can see from the onboard camera here he ran a speed during a 13 laps quick enough i believe to put him fifth fastest on the grid i mean it was a phenomenal display gave everybody goosebumps and it was a very emotional time tommy he went flat out for, without lifting for 13 laps and enjoyed it absolutely jimmy vassar waved the flag there were tears all around a huge ovation he could tell that Alex loved it too. That was simply to prove to himself that he could do it. Then last weekend, the bug got the better of him again. And Alex Zanardi climbed into a BMW M3 to compete in the final round of the European Touring Car Championship. A car with a steering wheel mounted clutch. He went out in race one and sadly got involved in someone else's accident after qualifying well up on the grid. They brought the car back to the pits, fixed it up. He started next to last as a result of his performance in the first race. It climbed all the way to seventh, while up front, that red number four alpha in the hands of fellow Italian Gabriele Tarquini went on to clinch the European Touring Car Championship at Monza. Formula One veteran Tarquini, now a legend in touring cars. The machinery is now on track in Surfers Paradise. Trying to get us in a rate worthy condition. 
Now there's more news from this past week in motorsports, and sadly, some of it was tragic. I'm talking about the accident on Wednesday at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway that took the life of 26-year-old racer Tony Renna as he stood poised at the big break that might have made him an open wheel competitor of the first order. Derek, you knew Tony Renna well. He was a friend to many of us. He raced since he was six years of age. Uh, he had it all, including a new contract with the Target Chip Ganassi team. It was during that initial test that it all went wrong and his promise will forever remain unfulfilled. He will be memorialized in a public ceremony in Indianapolis on Monday. Welcome back live to Surfer's Paradise, the Champ Car Grand Prix of Australia. Bob Varsha, Derek Daly, and Tommy Kendall with you. The storm appears to have moved off from left to right as you look northward from Surfer's Paradise, off over the blue waters of the Pacific. And hopefully, we will be back racing before too very long. Here's a look at our race summary. Bruno Jancara needs to win this race and pick up the bonus championship point for most laps led. He has led the first 13 laps. We have had three full course cautions and one red flag. Cars out of the race, Oriol Servia contact with the wall on the first green flag lap. Tiago Montero had mechanical difficulties, a gearbox we are told later on that same lap. And then Sebastian Bourdais, whose car you're looking at right now, brought out the red flag with a massive crash, no doubt due to the early stages of that rainstorm. Now, just before we came on the air live, we actually saw Carl Haas do an extensive blessing on this particular car. And the area he concentrated on, Tommy, because you and I watched it, were the wheels. I've never seen him concentrate so much on the wheels. And all four wheels are completely destroyed on this thing right now. When he blesses it, he touches in each individual part. He touches the wishbones, the half shafts, and so forth. Everything was going fine until he started blessing the indie girl that was standing. That's right. The she was definitely a little nervous about that. That is the ritual that we've seen so many times of Carl Haas trying to put his hand on every specific part of significance on his racing cars before they go on the racetrack. I'm a little surprised to see Bordet crash out because uh, you know this they ran their, their new sponsor for the first time in two years last year in Mexico. The regulations allowed it. But to me it, it just you know didn't seem like Bordet was driving as hard this week as he did last week. And so to see him crash out was a bit of a surprise to me. Wasn't driving as hard? No. That business of Carl Haas blessing the car leads to a great story that Bobby Rahal tells at Mid Ohio once Bobby was sitting in his race car getting ready to start and he looked up to see Carl Haas blessing his car. Apparently Carl got mixed up about which cars he actually had on the racetrack where that weekend. Bobby went on to win the race. He thought that would be the end of it, but Haas has continued with that tradition ever since. It appears that drivers are beginning to report back to their race cars. Well, there's Roberto Moreno, who's <laughs> no going to make sure on. his his feet are dry before he gets in the car. Moreno's a great story this weekend. He told the local reporter he loves it in Australia. He'd like to move here, certainly when his oldest daughter graduates from high school in a couple of years, but perhaps sooner if he could get himself a ride in the V8 Supercar Series. Moreno has a one-year deal with the Airdes competition team. So after next weekend, he'll be a free agent, we assume. And the reason they pay so much attention to having their feet dry, their socks dry, and the boots is because the pedals inside, you can't dare have a chance that your foot might slip from the brake pedal or onto the throttle. And also, if it's too wet inside, you can get blisters on your feet uh, from too much friction, too much heat. But Moreno, you see him here. He's had some great days in Australia. He scored his first Formula One points in Adelaide, and of course, the last time he was in Surfers, he was on the pole. Here's the Higante team awaiting the arrival of driver Michelle Jordan. Here's Jimmy Vassar, Captain America, making his way back to his car. Now let's take a look at what brought out this red flag. This was Sebastian Bourdais down in the turn one complex. He gets a little bit sideways and then completely loses control around the next bend. Smashes the right side, 
Now, the accident didn't actually bring out the red, but th this was the beginning of the rain that eventually brought the red out. Look at the wheel spin. Tag now is in the middle of that smoke screen. There's the two Herdez cars. Fernandez is in there. And I, I don't know how they all stopped in time and all took different directions almost and made it past Sebastian Bourdais. Quite a moment. With that, the red flag came out. The skies opened. Not necessarily in that order. Now it appears that we are almost ready to get back to racing. Stay with us. There are races, and then there are 500 milers. The drivers are going to be running in packs all day long, at speeds approaching 240 miles an hour. There's nothing like going racing. Here comes Vassar and Michael Slipstream. He goes high into turn one and a bit for the lead in the race win. This could be the move of the race right here. White flag is out. Jimmy's got this race in hand right now. It's Vassar and Andretti. Jimmy Vassar, he will become the first two-time winner of the 500 presented by Toyota. That's the kind of excitement that await us. A week from now, we hope, pending that very, very difficult situation with the wildfires going on in the area of California Speedway. But if all goes well, these are our broadcast plans for the King Taco 500, qualifying Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and the race itself Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, only on Speed Channel. About a five-minute break before the command will be given to restart engines. The race has officially been shortened to 47 laps, meaning there will be 34 laps remaining when we go green. As Mario Dominguez prepares to climb back into his race car. Now getting the champ cars over here to Australia and getting them back in time for next weekend's race in California are a huge achievement. In fact, the logistical nightmare that makes up this part of the season began a couple of weeks ago in Mexico City. And that includes not just the race cars and the personnel, but of course, the all-important tires. Here's more on that. Just two days after all the trucks and crews returned from the Champ Car Race in Mexico City, Bridgestone Tire Busters were busy at the Indianapolis International Airport pre-mounting all the tires for shipment to Australia. Coming back into the United States and coming back to the facility and loading this up, getting it uh, mounted, balanced, and in the airplane and back to California Speedway. This is a massive, you know, day by day by day by day process. And you know, when we go from one country to another country and the relationships that we build up, the integrity of a company like Bridgestone Firestone is a huge, uh, you know, undertaking and, and, and certainly a huge responsibility uh, to be able to, to, to move this city of cart, you know, from one city, from one country, to one nation, to, you know, so it's a, it's a great operation. And here we are, it's, it's a team effort. Back to live action in Surfer's Paradise. Looks like Patrick Carpentier climbing back into his machine. Three minutes to the command to start engines or restart engines in Surfer's Paradise. Stay with us. Welcome back to Surfer's Paradise. Bob Barsha, Tommy Kendall, Derek Daly with you. Our picture's coming to us from Australian Network 10. Very close to the command to restart engines. Now, as Derek Daly picked up earlier, the running order when the cars came into pits under the red flag was not the correct running order, and that's been realized in race control. There is Bruno Jancara. He is the race leader when we restart. Second is Adrian Fernandez. Third, Mario Dominguez. Fourth, Alex Tagliani. In fifth is Michelle Jourdain. And then sixth through tenth are Roberto Moreno, Mika Salo, Darren Manning, Paul Tracy, and Patrick Carpentier. As you can hear, the Ford Cosworth Turbo V8s are ignited once again. Now this, what's gone down here, raises a whole bunch of questions in my mind. One is rain. Last time we saw rain, Bruno Giancara had a flawless run at Elkhart Lake. Paul Tracy threw it away on the first lap, trying to make up a position. Um, the other thing is they're starting on, on wet tires, but they will be needing dries relatively quickly. In those kinds of situations, a good way to make the, a, a big 
number of positions. If you're the first guy to go to slicks and it's the right time, you can make up huge chunks of time. Obviously, that would be a strategy that would benefit Tracy. It's also the riskiest move. So it will be interesting to watch how Bruno, uh, when you're in the lead and you have things under your control, you'll probably wait until somebody else puts dries on and goes quicker than you're going on wets. For what it's worth, we highlighted Moreno earlier on. He has so far set fastest lap of the race, of course, in the dry conditions, at a 95, 135.561. He is one of only three drivers in the 95s, Tag being second fastest and Fernandez being third fastest. So people, uh, Bourdais was in the 95s before he crashed. So the leaders, Junker in particular is not the fastest car on the racetrack uh, in the dry conditions. Tracy was running in the, the low 96s all the while passing people, so um, it remains to be seen. And, and Bruno really didn't have any incentive to run any quicker than he was going either. He was in front, didn't need to take any more chances, had a comfortable gap. So it's, it, I don't think it's, it's uh, definitive as to who has the quickest car at this point. And I know it would be nice to think that Tracy is mindful of the championship and he's going to be disciplined and not make any wild moves. But well, it Tommy, it, it sort of goes against the grain of, of his personality and his style. I would argue that the, situ the situation almost helps that because now that he's way back with Bruno being up front, he can't afford to just sit back here in ninth spot. He's got to make stuff happen. So instead of having to fight his, his nature, his nature and what he needs to do actually overlay pretty closely right here. He needs, I mean, ideally he'd like to clinch the championship going into Fontana because going into a 500 miler, anything can happen. So it's worth taking chances here to try to get up there and get this championship clinched. If not, he'll just race some heads up with a little bit of an edge going into Fontana. So I would argue that going forward here and, and really trying to get up through the field is probably the best course of action. Let me correct something I said earlier take a look at the current running order the 47 laps total in the race are counted beginning now in other words we don't start counting laps again when we go green this lap will count so there'll be 33 I'm guessing remaining when the green flag waves does that make any sense and because we go greater than half distance, if we go to 47 laps, then full championship points will be awarded. Doesn't look as though the bizarre weather in surfers has dampened the enthusiasm of the crowd much. Some 300,000 expected over four days here in surfers. In Mexico City, two weeks ago, there were over 400,000 fans over three days, including more than 220,000 excuse me, more than 200,000 on race day. Yeah, it was, 221, I think, was the final number. So CART and the Champ Car Series have gone over 2 million fans for the second straight year, and a total of over 700,000 of them in two race weekends. Pretty amazing. Now, this has the potential to dry up fairly quickly here, so you give 10 or 12 laps with these cars running at reasonable speed, you're going to dry a line here fairly quickly if this rain holds off. Remember, uh, obviously they ran at Elkhart in the rain, but th this is the first time we've seen these cars on speed without traction control in the wet. And those curves, generally speaking, are the painted parts which you have no problem running on in the dry, especially the curbs on the exit, are often very, very slippery. To the point where you, you, you steer clear of them. You don't want to put your, your tire up on them. The other thing is, if there's gonna be standing water anywhere, it will be right at where the asphalt meets the curbing, where there's a little bit of a trough. Bridgestone brought 350 wet weather potenzas. We saw the... Uh, the big shipment go out earlier on. Um, you can use as many as you like. There are no stipulations as to uh, our restrictions on the amount of wet weather tires you use. There is Bourdais. Sebastian Bourdais, of course, has a bit of a debrief with his mechanics. What might have been a lot of damage. 
brings up another point with that 500 miler coming up next weekend. The last thing you want to do is bend your race car here. Field is on the back stretch along the Pacific Coast. Board with Mika Salo, PK Racing Lola. Never won a Formula One race, but was so close in Germany when he filled in for Michael Schumacher, was ordered to move over to let er Eddie Irvine pass him to take the win. He might be a good man to keep an eye on in these conditions. Mika Sala, with all that Formula One experience, being from Finland, great car control. That's the key, being from Finland. That's right. <laughs> this, is, this is normal weather conditions for every exactly. Finnish driver that learns how to drive over there. Every time I see Mika Salo, I think about he and his countryman, Mika Hakkinen, who together divided the spoils in British Formula 3. They were neck and neck, stride for stride everywhere, and yet their careers took such different directions. Hakkinen, a two-time world champion. Salo never won a Formula 1 race in 110 attempts. Definitely a different road from his countrymen. Now, Bruno Look looked sliding. as if, yeah, Bruno looked as if he had quite a lead here. He doesn't, not there. Off turn 12 they come, slewing sideways out by that concrete wall. And look at the rooster tails they raise as we go green. Look how far Dominguez is behind Fernandez. Gives Junker a, a huge jump. That won't help Paul Tracy. Everybody recalls what happened in those diminished vision si situations last year. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, Alex Tagliani doesn't quite get it right. Salo is in trouble, we hear. Salo is in trouble with his engine, misfiring as he went down the pit straight. He may have stopped on course. There is Salo. Is he in the concrete? No. Looks it's like he just wants a push. Did he spin? It's a We're hearing that his engine started to miss and then just stopped. I wonder, did he give a boot full of horses and uh, loop it? Coming down that last left-hander. Yeah, that's Ooh, exactly what he did. You're right. Okay, Mika. So much for your theory. Tell well, me what. There you tell, go. Me, tell me what you learned <laughs> when you were you 12 go. years of age. <laughs> Mr. Car Control in Finland. <laughs> oh gosh, isn't it always the way it happens? Okay, Mika Salo just went from. Was it? Where was he? Salo was fifth. running about. Was he fifth? He was fifth. Yeah. Here it is. Here, what top of your screen? Yeah. Nice and simple. Tracy's right. Yeah, Tracy oh. past Manning. <laughs> On board with Darren Manning here. That's Salah right ahead of him. There's Salah who loses it. Gone, gone. Manning goes to the outside, then goes left. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. There goes Tracy. Is that legal of Tracy? Is the green flag out? Uh, exactly what I'm is. wondering. Once the green is out. I think it is, yeah. Hmm. So Tracy made up two more places. There'll be no way to synchronize it, actually, to study that may be a good thing for Paul. Stay with us. Have you checked out the phenomenon that is Wind Tunnel with Dave Despain Monday through Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern here on Speed Channel? This week among Dave's guests on Wednesday, internet journalist Peter DiLorenzo, and on Thursday, the entire trackside gang from Phoenix. With all the discussion of the closing stages of the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship. Wind Tunnel with Dave Despain, Monday through Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern, only on Speed Channel. Paul Tracy leads the championship as they run at this moment with Bruno Junquera on the race lead, and Paul Tracy knocking on the door of the top five. Junquera would finish the day well within the 21-point margin he must have if he is to take the championship fight that is a fight for a million dollar bonus in addition to the Vanderbilt Cup to the final race of the season next weekend at California Speedway in Fontana. Once again, here are program plans for the final weekend of the season. Qualifying Saturday on the big two mile oval at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time and then the race on Sunday at 2.30 live only on Speed Channel. Final round of the Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford for 2003. 
on board with Paul Tracy following Moreno. Moreno's teammate, Dominguez, there was a story in the newspaper on Thursday that basically said Dominguez last year had no credibility despite the fact that he won the race. Having seen his performance this year, particularly with his win in Miami, they now regard him as legit. And he's legit today, running in third place. That was definitely a difficult situation last year. Horrible weather, a crapshoot on pit stop strategy. And many thought that Mario Dominguez celebrated just a little bit too much for what was considered essentially a gift victory. This year he came back and earned one straight up on the streets of Miami, Florida in a 1-2 for the Air Dance competition team. And then, perhaps even more important to him, he finished on the podium in his native Mexico City. Once again, we'll try to get things underway. Green flag, lap 19 of what is now a 47 lap race. If you ever oh, doubted that these guys crazy. were brave, watching them in that rooster tail, ah, no contact, I don't think. You know what, I think, but uh, Jordan straight line that chicane, I, I imagine Jordan will probably draw a penalty for that. I, and, you, and you see what, what Moreno did also because he couldn't turn in because Tracy poked his nose down the inside. Right. Moreno is good in the rain. Oh, tag, tag, tag needs to give way to Jordan down the inside. Moreno's going to look also. Oh, 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 contact there. Uh oh, oh, oh. oh. Saw it coming. Two cars. Tracy. Oh, oh, oh no. He hits him. There's your championship leader. Now he has stopped. Did he keep the engine running? Darren Manning in the red, white, and blue car. That's Walter Salas. Oh, now he's hit the backside. Running over all sorts of things. Tagliani stopped. Tracy motors away. Looks like Moreno is back underway. Now Tracy's left rear suspension is also broken. I think it's his right rear. Right, right sorry, way. right rear, right rear. And that probably is when he hit tag pulling away because the left front tire is off the ground. Unless he got speared from the rear end, it's just a, uh, a flat on the right rear. Salas has stalled it, trying to get turned around. See that. Okay, see that what was, happens. That was the contact of Paul's right front to Moreno's left rear. They hit again, knocks the nose askew. And now Tagliani having his foot buried. And he taps Tracy from behind, on board with Tracy. He'll go up the side of Moreno. Oh, so Tracy hits him. Now Moreno goes in with him. Moreno goes in with him. Watch the contact. Tracy's going to try to pin him against the slower it. traffic. Oh. But that had nothing to do with Tag. Now, but Tag has his foot buried and then comes back at him here. And then Manning runs into the right rear. So Tag, oh no, Tag got collected by Moreno, who was being spawned by Paul. Mm. There's the right front and there, damage. And there's the doink from the rear from Manning. Yeah, there's, okay. Sometimes there are just no words. So let me ask you again, Tommy. Do you think Tracy will be aggressive, his normal <laughs> style, or will he be mindful of the championship? Actually, this is Tracy pulling away, so he gets back. Uh-oh. Oh. What was that? Stands on it. That wasn't Paul there, it was, was it? was Tracy in reverse. Now, now what, he goes what, What's forward. the right rear? Right rear. Boom. Oh, and that's what broke the right rear. Uh-huh. Yeah. Tracy, left side of your screen. Moreno begins to spin. I don't know. I don't think Paul hit Moreno that no, time. Moreno no. got in deep trying to hold, hold Paul on, back on. behind him. Okay, Tracy down the inside. Moreno forced to go straight line right behind Jordan. But Moreno now knows Tracy is in aggressive mode. How far Tracy comes from. Last chicane. Now we're going to come to the left-hander. Paul has a run on Moreno coming up here, and Moreno gets a second bit of wheel spin, and that slows his forward progress. And Paul 
does not get pulled out in time. See, Moreno gets a little sideways, and then he gets more wheel spin a second time right there, and that's what... And there's contact and there. There's the contact. Now, Moreno goes in deep to try to stop Paul from getting around uh, him, loses it, catches tag. Yeah. Paul did not actually hit Moreno to put him into that spin. No. Moreno spawn, hits tag, spins him right into Tracy's way, and then the traffic jam starts, and Mika Salo makes up about five positions from the back of the grid. Boom! There's the big Ow. one on the right rear. Yeah, so that right rear suspension is broken also. Looks like the wow. crew's going to give it a shot. Their only hope now, though, is they're going to be they're going to be laps down. So their only hope now is that attrition makes it so that less than 12 cars finish on the lead lap. This is from Darren Manning's car in the midst of that nose to tail. Uh, Paul backs backs up into him. Does he think he's driving a Hummer? <laughs> backs into him. Watch this right rear look. Oh. oh, that was quite a whack against Tagliani's car. Paul sits there and realizes championship points beginning to slip away here. Things get a little bit easier for Jourdain, or for uh, Junkera. And Tommy, Paul Tracy has not done well on, 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 on high-speed over this year. They were a disaster in, 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 uh, in when they went to the Euro Speedway at Lausitz. And I don't think they were good at Fontana last year. Is that any indication? Well, Lausitz isn't a real indicator because they were dialed out based on their mistake on the aero package. Okay. Uh, and they knew that was going to happen at the time. Now they can set up. For yeah, I, I would imagine they'll, uh, they'll be very competitive. But, I mean, the 500 milers attrition-wise, anything can happen. Uh, you, you certainly don't want to go into one of those, but they have no choice. I mean, he's still ahead. He, can, he doesn't need to beat Bruno. Right. He just needs to finish quite close to Bruno. And Paul actually did make that comment this weekend. He'd like to finish it here because in a 500 miler or a long super speedway race, it becomes such a crapshoot. There's Alex Tagliani. Quick look over him as well. He's back on his way. We'll take a break and return to Surfer's Paradise. Welcome back to Surfer's Paradise. For all the latest news and information, as well as highlights, check out Speed News. Sunday night at Speed News NASCAR Edition, 30 minutes of NASCAR news and information at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Then Speed News Sunday with the rest of the news of the world of motorsports, beginning at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And then NASCAR Victory Lane, all the stories from this weekend's events at 8 p.m. Eastern. Look at the side of Moreno's car. There's something dragging on the right side pod. It's blue. I don't know whether it's something from somebody else's car or from his car, but Mika Salo went from last place because of the spin we saw earlier all the way up to 10th place. There's Moreno. Can you see what that is, Tommy? Do you know what that is? That might be a shop rag or something. Or is it a bit of Paul Tracy's race car? Or perhaps just a plastic souvenir bag. On the right side pod. Dragon on the ground, there it is. Maybe it is just a grocery bag. Yeah. Collecting up the bits. Expect the green this time by. We are 20 laps into this race, which has been shortened to 47 laps total. We've had five yellow flags and one red flag, as well as a summer's worth of lousy weather. Oh, and another spin off turn 11. It's Mario Haberfeld in the MyJack car from Conquest Racing. Looks like there's no damage. He's back on his way. Look at this. Darren Manning going around one of the Dale Coyne cars. Trying to get to Alex Tagliani. Manning will be one of the most experienced people in the rain here. Look at Mika Salo in a big dust oh. up here with Levin. Oh, no. Don't tell me he knocked his front wing off. Hey, Derek, he just knocked his front wing off. Did he just knock his front wing off? Wasn't it Casey Stengel who once said of the New York Mets, does anybody here know how to play this game? <laughs> By the way, congratulations to the Florida Marlins on locking up the World Series championship this weekend. An incredible pile of 
speedy dry left out there in the middle of that corner where Paul Tracy, Alex Tagliani, and a cast of thousands came together just a couple of laps ago. Alex Tagliani looking down the inside of Roberto Moreno. Oh, and puts the squeeze on him. Roberto still has the grocery bag on the right side pod. The he of Herdez is all that's left. Salo hasn't slowed down with that broken wing much. Oh, tag flies by him. Flies by the whole lot of them. Uh oh. We've got a chicane and a moving chicane. <laughs> exactly. Here's Moreno now under attack. Levine. Maybe more gearbox problems for Levine. Now, can, can uh, Salo, does he have to stop or is that okay? I think he'd probably keep going. I think he might. until the uh, racetrack picks up traction and speed. And it appears we're getting full sun now. And you can just see that glimmer of light pavement, which would mean the track is drying out. Well, Salo is probably pretty smart to stay out there, hoping for a yellow flag. I'd say at this point, the chances are pretty good. And that last corner, which they call turn 12, is still really, really slippery. As you see Paul Tracy back in action. Three laps down. Well, Mika Salo has decided he cannot continue. He is in the pits for a nose change. Meanwhile, Bruno Jancara sails blissfully along. We are less than six laps from the opening of the second pit window in what has become a two-stop race. Here it is. This is um, Haberfeld. Now, he does a complete 360 and doesn't hit anybody. Where does he get hit? Here's Salo. That gets in a dust up with Levin. Levin, oh, Levin moved over. But you know what? I mean, that's a case of Levin moved over to drive around the corner. Yeah. I mean, Salo should have known he was going to be there and going to do that. I think he realized it, but there was so little grip. Yeah. He was trying to get out and couldn't slow down. Now, Bruno stands to capitalize, much like in Miami, based on a mistake, another mistake. Well, this wasn't a mistake by Paul. This was, uh, you could argue, he shouldn't have maybe been in the club, but uh, that was triggered by Moreno. Anyways, from Paul's misfortune. And so, but now the roles are reversed. Remember, Adrian Fernandez was leading that race. Bruno tried to apply some pressure, and uh, it, he said something afterwards. He says, you know, I got tired of everybody saying you know, he's going to win this championship. He's always conservative. And he says it galled him, and he decided to try to put some heat on Fernandez and ended up making a mistake and taking himself out. So now Fernandez is starting to pull up on the back of Junquera, running about three to four tenths of a lap quicker than Bruno. So let's see what happens if, if Adrian can get up on the back of Bruno. Meanwhile, Bruno needs to would like to, every point he gets is one point closer he is to Paul Tracy heading into Fontana. There's how they stand at this moment. Paul Tracy with a seven point lead over Bruno Jacquera in the championship. And that would send the title to next weekend's 500 miler in California. At the end of this lap, he should clinch the lap for most laps led. So then it would be six behind. Bonus championship point. Sun now shining brightly as Roberto Moreno makes a stop. Yeah, they're gonna change the side pod. There was most of that right side pod was missing. But just run out with a new one. Incidentally, Junquera, even in these conditions, he, he is the fastest car on the racetrack. 115.69 seconds. Second fastest is Jordan. Well, that's a point worth making about Bruno Junquera. When the, when the traction conditions are at their worst, he seems to thrive. In the wet at Road America, on that difficult circuit in Denver where he dominated, leading flag to flag. Uh, Moreno will climb out. Once they got the bodywork off that right side pod, it appears they found something they could not live with. Tough break for the 44-year-old Brazilian. Has a pole on this racetrack on his resume. Turning into a nice day in Surfer's Paradise. Stay with us. We'll be back for more after this. Welcome back to Surfer's Paradise. And as things stand, Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford Championship and the million dollar bonus that goes with it along with the Vanderbilt Cup will not be decided 
until the Kentaco 500, the season finale at California Speedway in Fontana. Join us next Saturday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Qualifying coverage followed by the race at 2.30 p.m. Eastern on Sunday, live here on Speed Channel. Bob Varsha, Tommy Kendall, and Derek Daly, glad to have you with us on the bizarre day at Surfer's Paradise. As you can see, the track is damp but drying. And the sun is now fully out doing its part to help dry this track up. So we'll see pit stops for dry weather tires shortly. You see Jimmy Bass, who started 15, has moved up 10 spots and currently runs fifth. Actually, that was before this last lap. Both Tagliani and Hunter Ray got around Jimmy on that lap, so now Jimmy runs seventh. We told Jimmy touched the wall. I think it was down in turn three. Ryan Hunter Ray, 22 year old rookie from Boca Raton. On that last lap, Tagliani was the fastest car. They are running about half a, they're improving about half a second a lap, which will, which will improve even more as this line dries out. And you can see it clearly now in some of the corners, it's completely dry. So these wet tires are just going to get tortured. I don't see anybody finding the wet yet. On now board with Michelle they only Jordan. Need to go three more laps before the pit window will open, so they'll stand up for that long. Hello, Mexicans, Fernandez and Jordan. Each man a winner thus far this season. Fernandez won in Portland, Oregon, on the natural terrain road course. Jordan has won twice on the oval at Milwaukee and in Montreal. Fernandez for this afternoon ran a low downforce setup, anticipating, of course, that it was going to be dry all the time. He wanted to try and save fuel also, but a low downforce and these type of tricky conditions is exactly what you do not want, which is probably why you see Jourdain appears to be a bit quicker, but catching and passing are two completely different things on a street circuit. Now, they're not that far behind Junkera. be interesting to see it looks pretty dry but there's still 20 some seconds off a good dry time so the window opens in two laps now on lap 29 be interesting to see if if everybody peels in the minute it'll be interesting to see what they think if drives are quicker at that time and that's Bruno just out yeah. in front of Adrian I think it's damp enough that slick tires are going to be a bit of an adventure. Yeah. The, most of the team, the team, all the team will leave that up to the driver themselves. Mm -hmm. Offline is wet. It's Tracy still trying hard to make up three laps. But three laps down. <laughs> right. All these teams are in radio contact, so you can be pretty sure that Dominguez is being told if Tracy tries to pass, move over and let him go. Rena Jankara has officially clinched the bonus championship point for most laps led. Meanwhile, Tagliani is catching Tracy at a quite a clip. Separated by several laps, but Tagliani is still the quickest car on the track at this point. Look at that low sun. Still a lot of sliding off turn 12. The window will open next time by. Tracy hit around. Yeah, Tracy hit the wall here. Coming up turn two on Friday. So lost some time there. Was slow over these chicanes. He's, that's an unusual line over the chicane, but then realized that you crashed over the top of them and he rocketed right up towards the, to the second row. But it's been all adventure today. You see they're closing down on Bruno. Yep, that lap uh, Fernandez was the quickest car on the track. 
by just a fraction over Jordan. <laughs> Jordan is clearly being held up here, but he cannot make the same type of mistake that we saw earlier with so many people. You have to, when you get down the inside, you have to be absolutely decisive and then get alongside the car. You stick your nose in, you will get it chopped off. Well, he started to come alongside much like Mika Salo. He was on the wetter part of the track. I thought that uh, he was overcommitted at that point, but once uh, he realized he couldn't do it, he was able to get all the way back out. Now, he will know that even at the speed Fernandez is running, they're both catching Junquera, so he's, he's, at least he's not losing touch with the leader. But you know how tough it is to pass, and if you have a chance to get by someone, you don't know if, if the advantage will be the same when, you, when both guys are on slick, so you need to try to capitalize when you can. Different line, different line, Bourgeardain went wide, chopped in under Fernandez, couldn't quite get the grip. Now the pits will be open for the final stop. Now he closes up the braking. He follows him around the first chicane, and it's the back side of the racetrack that Jourdain made the attack earlier on. And Juncker there is still now closer to second and third. There you go. So Jourdain is clearly faster than first and second right now. as long as he stays on the racetrack. Remember, they'll have until lap 36 to come in. By 36, they must come in. And this may work out just fine. You stay out there as long as your wets hold up. Again, the crossover that you're trying to figure out is at what point... Here we go, here we go, here we go. He's got the run, got a great run. Good run, yeah. There's still sideways everywhere. He's got to get off the wet stuff in the brake zone. Okay, now, now, now he's headed squarely for the back of, of Junquera. Jourdain moves into second. That's Junquera just ahead on the road. Now, in pure theory, again, what you're looking for is at what lap are slicks faster than reins. Now, I say, the reason I say pure theory is sometimes the, the slicks might be quicker, but if there's water in various places, it might be too big a risk to try to do it. To me, it looks like it's pretty dry, so I would imagine it wouldn't surprise me if one or all of these guys head for the pits this time. Okay, really, really slick through here, Jordan Fenn. There's the wide line, chops under again. So hard to get the traction, no traction control, remember. This year, that's where the fishtail, see it right there. Okay, none of them heading to the pits. So they still feel, again, they're, they're almost 20 seconds off a dry time. So even though there's no standing water, all three of these guys Ooh. obviously feel. <laughs> yeah, this is the toughest fight now Bruno's had all afternoon here. Oh, and Jordan got in there too hot. Not so hot that he had to straight line it, but hot enough that he really was late picking up the throttle. And here comes Tagliani for slicks. Now these yep. lead guys will be watching Tagliani's time when he comes out. And that'll, he'll be like the, the, the guinea pig to see how quickly the slicks are quicker. And oh, he moved, he, he passed him. Yep. Jordan got him. Junquera very slow there too. Here comes Fernandez to go by Jordan. And you see what- Excuse me, Junquera. And you see what Junquera did? He moved away, exactly. let him go, didn't fight for the line, said I need all the points I can get, and I need four wheels on this car to get any points. This happened two weeks ago to Jankara, where he faded from second back to seventh, but that be was because he was sick Ooh. in his stomach, which we didn't know at the time. Perfect move by Jourdain. Oh, and Fernandez gets awfully close before he can make his presence known. And Jourdain keeps an eye in his mirrors to see exactly where Fernandez is. Now, you say the leaders are going to watch Tagliani. Tag, of course, hopes that he's called it right, that he's on the racetrack gaining seconds a lap over these boys because he put the slicks on earlier. And often, if you watch that, there's a delay. This next lap of Tagliani might be slow, which can be misleading. It's going to be slow because the tires are cold. Got to get them up to temp. And all these guys will have to go through that same slow lap when they decide to do it. Slow lap or two, perhaps. So Fernandez feathered that throttle through 11 and 12. Remember, Fernandez won here 
In 2000, one of his eight wins. So he knows his way around here. Also had a podium in 1999. Finished third here. We'll take a quick break and be back for the final round of pit stops here at Surfers Paradise. Welcome back to Surfers Paradise. Just a moment ago, this is what happened to Alex Tagliani out there on dry weather slick tires as he went down into the first chicane. And it all goes wrong. So the gamble that could have paid off handsomely, Tommy, is get lost in a 360 spin and he stalled the engine. And remember I said that in theory that's probably the right <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> There's a joke about the difference between theory and reality, and uh, Tagliani just figured that out. And this is what happened to Mario Haberfeld, who suddenly slowed. He, too, has come to a stop on the racetrack. So we are under our sixth full, full course caution plus one red flag and a long stoppage for terrible weather. Haberfeld getting a restart from the Simple Green safety team. And everybody running that chicane. And Mika Sala was back up into the top 10 again. He is ninth. He's been up and down all afternoon. There's Darren Manning. He, Ryan Hunter Ray, and Jimmy Vassar all stopped while we were, while we were away for slick tires. Pits are now open. We are five laps from the end of the pit window. Now, the fact that they closed the pits on that, when they went yellow is, is going to really shuffle this up. What they, The stewards always make every attempt to pick up the leader, and then they leave the pits open so everybody can make their stops before they bunch up. Now, the effect of this will be all those guys who stopped right before, Tagliani accepted because he was stalled, but Vassar, Hunter Ray, all those guys, they're going to be at the front of the queue if Jordan, Fernandez, and Jacara stop. So now these guys have to decide, do we stop now or do we wait till it goes green? They'll probably wait till it goes green and have to try to build up a lead before they come into the pits. And we're being told that's why the pits were closed, because they had to go out and pick up the leader, Michelle Jordan. So now you've got Jourdain needing to try to build a lead on rain tires on a dry, very a drying track. Now, whoever the highest up car is on slicks, which I think is Hunter Ray. Yeah, they both stopped. Yep. Is nope, gonna, gonna be, come in now. Okay. Well now it's gonna it's gonna cycle Jimmy yeah, and Hunter Ray right to the front of the line. It's gonna be a did Tagliani. No, this is, is that Carpontier? Tag Tagliani's a lap down, so yep. it's going to be uh, American Spirit, Team Johansson, 1-2 right now. And Tracy stayed in. That's who the player's car was at the, at the bottom of the screen. Yes, Carpontier, I believe, just came in. When Haas crew goes to work, as does Team Ray Hall. And that whole oh, look, look, oh. Jordan beat Fernandez out again. Good. All of that because of slight difference in procedure having to close the pits. Carpentier ahead of Walter Salas. Now remember, we have a shortened race, so we only have 47 laps. There's only 15 more to go. So track position now on slicks and a drying track is absolutely vital. Jimmy could be in the pound seats here. Ryan Hunter Ray leading. Jimmy Vassar second. Remember, Jimmy flew about 10 laps earlier, was ahead of Ryan Hunter Ray and Tag, rushed the wall, lost those two positions. So if he hasn't damaged the car at all, Jimmy could be in good shape here to make an attack on Ryan Hunter Ray. This is not too different than the tactic that uh, Team Penske has been employing to great effect with Ryan Newman in Winston Cup, basically, because they closed the pits there. The only other time that's happened this year was Denver, but nobody had stopped right before and to capitalize on it. But Basically what it does is you figure out when you need to stop to make it to the end of the race. If a yellow comes out any time in between where they close the pits, you are sitting pretty. First ever Champ Car race lead for Ryan Hunter Ray with his teammate Jimmy Vassar just behind. We'll take a break and return for Green Flag Racing. Welcome back to Suddenly Sunny Surfers Paradise Australia. Bob Barsha, Tommy Kendall, Derek Daly with you for live coverage of round 18 of the Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford. 
Grand Prix of Australia. Ryan Hunter Ray and teammate Jimmy Vassar run one, two. Darren Manning in third, followed by his teammate, Rodolfo Levine, and then Michelle Jourdain. After several cars stopped for dry weather tires just before our sixth full course caution came out. Here are the points as of now. Bruno Junquera is right on the, the edge of extinction. If he falls any further back, mm -hmm. Paul Tracy will clinch. Tracy runs three laps down after that collision with Roberto Moreno in what has been a race full of twists and turns of fate for virtually every driver in the field. Yeah, we've had more storylines in the last 32 laps yeah. than we've had for quite a long time. And the head of the field now, this American Spirit team, Tommy, you just said a minute ago, these two guys are going to absolutely go at us. I guarantee, I guarantee you, Stefan's saying, all right, guys, one, two, one, two. <laughs> Jimmy Vassar is saying, you've got a lot of nerve calling me, <laughs> telling me to finish second with the year I've had. Yeah, now I'm remember. guessing that. We don't yeah, know for sure. Ryan Hunter Ray has had some great no. performances. There Mario goes Dominguez. Dominguez. So now Junker, that didn't give Junker a, 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 a position. Well, right now he's on the world's fastest tricycle. <laughs> and that's what he's doing. He's, he's trying to lose as little time as he can. He's not conceding anything. Anyway, I was, I was talking about Ryan Hunter Ray. He's had some great performances in his rookie season as the tricycle still at unabated speed trying to get back to the pit lane. He's not even bothered to go around the chicanes here. You can hear the underside dragon. Now, if that's the underside of, of, the, uh, of the rear upright, he's going to do enough damage that he won't be able to, he won't be able to put a wheel on and just continue. Right, you have to collect that tire. Bridgestone wants it back. <laughs> Hopefully there's a rubbing strip or something Dominguez can use here. I've got news for you. It's he called the hub. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. I mean, this simply just wasn't put. There's the nut. There goes ah. the nut. Yeah, so we're at the right rear tire man is going to have to explain um, why the car is in three separate pieces right now. Car, tire, nut. You know, I've never had anyone adequately explain to me whether, in fact, you change the temperature of the tire or clean it up by doing all that wicked back and forth sort of thing. Many years ago, I was doing a sports car race with former driver Whitney Gans. I asked him why he does that. He says, well, everybody else does it, so I figure I had to. Welcome back live to Surfers Paradise Australia. As the sun begins to sink low, we are getting ready for the green flag, and there will be 12 laps remaining in the Champ Car Grand Prix of Australia when we go green. Ryan Hunter Ray leads his American Spirit Team Johansson teammate Jimmy Vassar, then Darren Manning. Moments ago, Mario Dominguez lost his right rear wheel to extend the yellow flag, and there is a penalty for that. That will cost the Mexican driver a lap. There he is. Wow. That rule came into effect last year when we had a rash of wheels falling off. Hang on to your hollyhocks, because there's a few men there that have a lot to prove. Rookie Ryan Hunter Ray against the man who's won this race back in 96. Ryan Hunter Ray has had a great season as he leads the charge here. Remember, in Mexico, he set the fastest lap of the race. In fact, in Mexico, I think he had the four fastest laps of the race. So Ryan Hunter Ray has his wits about him now in this Reynard. Three Reynards, one, two, three. Four Reynards, one, two, three, four. Levin is fourth. Levin has one more stop to make. He did not change the dry tires during that whole exchange. Temporarily for him. Yeah. First race lead for Ryan Hunter Ray here in his rookie season. First podium was mid-Ohio. He was under pressure. He had a great race at mid-Ohio. And oh, look at this, he's sideways. Oh, did he miss it? In the brake zone, locked up the rears. Still dangerously damp out there. Levine having all sorts of problems. And now the team mix side Hunter by Ray. side. Oh. 
Richard, and here comes Manning. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know exactly what that was. At the, at the bottom of the picture, Ryan Hunter Ray locked his, locked his rears, just went wide through the chicane, and Jimmy had the run. Man, oh, look at Jimmy. He's sideways in the break zone. It's still very wet under those trees. And Manning is just sitting back and watching these two teammates go at it. The fastest Reinhardt qualified 12th. That was Hunter Ray. But Jimmy blocks the brakes again. He won here in 96 en route to the championship, did Jimmy Vassar. Now, we were told that race control was looking at Bruno Jonquera amid reports that he had shortcutted a chicane and gained two spots. We are looking into that. Look at Jimmy now. Jimmy is quick coming off these chicanes, and Manning is right there with Vassar. Oh. Oh, we got and a that's big Bruno. one. Bruno, Bruno Junquera to the right of your screen, and Mario Haberfeld to the left. And the championship is over. Well, the race isn't over. It's over. Bruno Beaten. needs to outscore Paul. Well, that's true. Even Paul six stops points. now. That's right. Yeah! Nice one, boys. Marcus. What did they just say? That was, that was Tim Coffeen. He just said, nicely, boys, Parkus. So I presume that Bruno got tagged or got sucked Nerfed into an by accident Mario. by somebody. I suppose cynicism well, is some sort of a release. That's Bruno's wing. Wow. Rocky Rokaline with the goatee. Bruno's engineer. Oh, wow. Hard to tell from there. What was that? Bruno just absolutely lambasted the wall on the right side. And Mario's nowhere in sight. Was that, no. Was that There's Hoverfeld at the back of the picture. Is that the break zone? Is that PT? Which, which player's car is One that? of the PF cars. And there's how Haberfeld got into trouble. Wow. Okay, that was Carpentier, which was the player's car. It's hard to know what happened there because the picture uh, gathers up uh, Jonquera while the accident is already underway. But Bruno just absolutely clouted the wall on the right side. Now that, that is a braking zone that is not completely straight, so there's a slight bend. Remember Vassar had a big, pretty okay. big wreck there during qualifying the, a couple years back, the losing key the back here end. is, I heard Tim Coffeen say, way to park us. Tim yeah. Coffeen is the lead mechanic on Junqueras' car, so they saw something, because that first chicane is actually within eye shot of the, um, of the, of the last pit that Junquera is in. Let's have a look at the replay again if we can. Left side of your screen. Now Bruno is already in trouble. There's a player's the car there, but, but well he looks him. he looks to be yeah. too far behind. Is there? I don't see another car on the left hand side. Nope. That's a very strange. Maybe he lost it under braking. I wonder if Coffin thought that Patrick Carpentier had something to do with Bruno's crash, but because yeah, top of the screen is where the pits are. So so. They wouldn't have seen pit. it. No, they, they wouldn't, but they might have seen a blue player's car mm -hmm. and thought yeah. the worst. Or Bruno could have radioed something. Mm -hmm. Well, here, the here it is again. End result is he's out. Yep. End result and the championship is, yeah. is clinched. Oh, Mika Salo whacked that wheel. He did indeed. And, and, and then you saw um, poor Mario Haberfeld. Uh, he lost it also in the brake zone and, and hit the wall hard. Salo decides to pit to yeah. let him have a look at the left front. Bench front suspension. Boy, he's been in the wars today. The hits just top keep ten, on back to last. Top ten, back to last. And they're going to give it a go. What a race! We've got 10 laps to go. Ryan Hunter Ray has got to hold off Jimmy Vassar for 10 laps. And Vassar, remember, appeared to be either more aggressive or that he could go a little bit deeper in the break zone. I wonder if Jimmy is suffering jet lag. Vassar was at Alex Zanardi's European touring car race at Monza. He surprised Alex by going to there to, uh, to Monza. Then he returned to the United States just in time to catch the flight to Australia. He'll go back on Monday for 
pre-race work in Fontana, California, where he's the defending champion. Then he's going to Brazil for a friend's wedding. Then he's going to Colombia to join another old teammate, Juan Pablo Montoya, for a charity karting event. And then he's going to celebrate his birthday, is Jimmy Vassar, in the Mexican desert with his old buddies, Mike and Robbie Groff, driving a Class 1 buggy in the Baja 1000. So what you meant to say, does he have jet lag? He's, or he's definitely going to have jet he's lag in about three or four days. Well, as they stand, Bruno Junquera has fallen to 27 points behind Paul Tracy in the championship, and that is more than enough for Tracy to clinch his first title as Paul heads for the pit lane. Rodolfo Levine, the Walker pits at the back. Keep an eye on Tracy and take a quick break. We'll be back with more from Surfers after this. Back at Surfers Paradise, Greg Hampson, engineer for Sebastian Bourdais. There is Bruno Junquera speaking with his engineer, Rocky Rocolin. As they begin their debrief a whole lot earlier than they had hoped to in this next to last round of the Bridgestone presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford. Bob Varsha, Derek Daly, and Tommy Kendall with you in a day that has seemed like weeks. Now there's Mario Haberfeld, who was just restarted a few moments ago, and he has spun installed again. Amazing that the Newman Haas team completely dominated the weekend until the end of the wet tire run. And suddenly it all began to go wrong for Junquera. Bourdais went earlier on, but boy, how many storylines we had here? A lot. More twists and turns than last year almost. So um, how big a celebration would Tracy have, Tommy? You're going to miss it. I imagine it'll be a big one. And another one when he gets back to the States. Here. Tracy yeah. had a comment in a media conference earlier this week as you look at Bruno Junquera, only his second DNF or did not finish of the season. Paul was asked how he's going to get back on the right time schedule for Fontana. He says, well, typically what we do in Australia is have a huge party and then sleep all the way home. So by the time sleep you get back to California, home. sleep it off and you're ready to go. Junquera thinks of what might have been. There's Carl Haas. Partnership, of course, with Newman, Paul Newman, Newman Haas Racing. We've documented many times this year that Bruno Junquera's championships are usually won in year three that he competes in a particular championship. Well, this breaks the cycle here because he was hired by Carl Haas specifically to win the championship. Carl thought he showed enough at Target Chip Ganassi Racing that he would be the man. In fact, it was at this race a year ago. I was sitting in the hotel restaurant, and at the next table, Bruno Junquera came and sat down next to Carl Haas. They got their pens out and started signing papers. Each man took a set and they went on their way. And Bruno denied that he had a deal. Yes. <laughs> well, it was also surfers last year where I had kind of my first tangible proof of, remember Paul Tracy couldn't say anything about his plans. He was under a gag order from Team Cool Green. And every day at the Marriott, I would see Paul Tracy, Patrick Carpentier, Neil Mithelwright, and Bob Beckson for players <laughs> in their shorts huddling. And I'd ask them what it was about, and they were trying to decide what chassis to run this year, all while there was no official confirmation. And Bruce Ashmore was begging to run Reynards. And uh, after the first day, I think Paul was third, and the players' cars were 18th and 19th. And Paul went up to Mithra and says, what do you think about those Lolas? And they said, and that's when the decision was made at Surfers last year to commit for the Lolas for players' foresight. Which became a sore point with Patrick Carpentier, because he very much wanted to stay with the Reynards. In fact, the last victory for a Reynard chassis was at Mid-Ohio last year in the hands of Patrick Carpentier. The best Reynard chassis finished this year was Ryan Hunter Ray on the podium in third place at Mid-Ohio. And the last one, two, three for Reynards as they run now was at Vancouver, Canada in 2001. So Look how close Jimmy is to yeah, Ryan. This, yeah, if you haven't gone to bed yet, don't dare go near your pillow because Vassar, I promise, oh, sideways by Manning, but Vassar will mount an attack here on Ryan Hunter Ray, who gets a great restart. He is the rookie, remember, the rookie leading one of the most important races of the year in Surfers Paradise. Looks like Jimmy's going to have his hands full, keeping Darren Manning and Michelle Jourdain behind him. There's Vassar. Then Manning. 
Jordan and Fernandez. Oh, Fernandez into the wall. Lightly. Is that the Bourdais corner? Same one, same curve? No, no. This is where the whole shenanigan with Moreno started. They spun at the second chicane. This is the next turn after that. The 90, the first of the double 90s. And full course caution again. Our seventh, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see if Ryan Hunter, Ray ha Ryan Hunter Ray has another perfect restart in it. I'm running out of fingers to keep counting these things. Front end damage for Adrian Fernandez, the 2000 winner, and once again, the simple green safety team goes to work. They're going to need to refuel at this rate. Take another look. Just on the gas, just yeah. that a little bit too soon. That was the corner. We saw Moreno and Tracy and Tag and Manning and two or three or four or five or six or seven others have that answered earlier. And he knew it immediately. My bad. So Jimmy is running out of laps. Ryan Hunter Ray is glad to see them count down here. <laughs> curiouser and curiouser, said Alice. We'll be back. Welcome back to Surfers Paradise Australia. Ryan Hunter Ray is all that stands between us and a potential first two time winner of this race. Jimmy Vassar, the 96 champion, runs in second place. Paul Tracy is in position to clinch his championship, but it has been a very difficult day for the seven time race winner this year. Let's review. First green flag lap of the race. Contact with the green car of Sebastian Bourdais sends Tracy spinning and back to the back of the pack. And then during the mid race sections, Tracy tried to move up the inside of Roberto Moreno with Alex Tagliani. They made it three wide down in turn three. Three into one in this case will not go. And then as Tracy tried to extract himself, he wound up driving over one of Alex Tagliani's wheels damaging his own right rear that led to a long stop. Here is the trip over Tagliani's wheel. That put Tracy three laps down. But because Bruno Junquera crashed out of the race just a few laps ago, Tracy is home and free with his first series championship. Here's a look at our race summary. Rookie Ryan Hunter Ray is in the race lead. He has led 10 laps thus far. Look at cars out of the race. Oriol Servia in a separate incident on the same lap that saw Paul Tracy spin the first green flag lap of the race. Tiago Montero suffered a gearbox problem. And most of the rest have been damaged from contact with the walls and with their competitors. Now Adrian Fernandez brought out our seventh and most recent full course caution by nosing into the trackside wall. The Staccate team appears to have the nose job complete and we've covered most of the high profile boys throughout the afternoon but Walter Salas right there in the yellow car with Dale Coyne is having by far the team and his best race of the year he is currently in sixth place and it will be his ambition to hold off Tagliani who is right behind him and they're in the midst of those swerving cars warming the tires Bob so I'm told yes is Paul Tracy in the blue and white PF racing car. Big movers, Jimmy Vassar started 15th, bitterly disappointed after an electrical fire in second round qualifying. He is currently second, meaning 13 spots advanced on the racetrack. Teammate Ryan Hunter Ray, just two fewer, but he holds the all important first position. Darren Manning has made up 11 spots, as has Walter Salas, as Derek mentioned, going from 17th to 6th. Lights are now out on the pace car. You mentioned that electrical fire with Vassar. Before that happened, Jimmy was fifth fastest in qualifying on Friday. So he has been fast right from the first lap. 
when he got here, which should make this fight with his teammates and his attempt to hold off Darren Manning even more interesting. And he's going to try to stay closer to Hunter Ray than he did the last time. He got right up on his gearbox. Hunter Ray might have given him a little bit of a brake check. Pardon? Among teammates? Pardon? Hunter Ray was always very good on restarts in the Toyota Atlantic Championship where he raced last year as you watch Wow, slewing off the corner. Look at that jump. There he goes again. Great restart by Ryan Hunter Ray. But this Four is where laps to go. Yeah, this is where he gets tricky. Still a very treacherous racetrack. And remember, as aggressive as Manning wants to be now, this could be his first podium of the year if he can keep his nose clean here. And when you were Darren Manning's age, would you have been thinking podium or second place right No, now? no, 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 second place. Listen to the wheel spin. And Jourdain is right there, as is Patrick Carpentier. Oh, 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 Manning has a look. Manning. Oh, he's going to force it. He's going to force the issue. Manning, Manning second. takes second. Wow. Wow. Now, can he go after Ryan Hunter Ray? Look, look in the mirrors. Look in the mirrors to see where Vassar is. Oh, and Vassar's looking for a way. And Jourdain right there. Tommy, you mentioned the wheel spin. That was great control of wheel spin by Manning coming off that left-hander to give him that run down the inside. Great run for Manning. He's been complaining of terminal understeer all weekend. Had a terrible time. Qualified very poorly for him. Considering he took the fight for the Rookie of the Year Championship to Sebastian Bourdais all season long, despite having to carry that Reynard chassis. Remember how quick Jourdain was before that yellow came out they were still on dry tires, but he was able to get by Bruno Junquera, who at that time was the quickest car on the racetrack. Manning had a great quote on Friday. He said the, the chicanes are brutal. Well, they're not as bad as they were on Friday because he attacked that one well in the brake zone to get under Jimmy. Three laps to go here, boys. Well, those guys swapping spots gave Hunter Ray a three-second lead. Now Carpentier catches up to the back of Jourdain. Salas still ahead of Tagliani. Dominguez right behind him. Levin, Manning's teammate. He's in the top 10 also, as is Jeff Boss. Michelle Jourdain poised to score 200 points this season. Right now, if the race were to end, he'd have 195 with one race to go. Five drivers in the last 10 years have won 200 or more points, and four of them won a championship with it. Only Dario Franchitti, who tied Juan Pablo Montoya with 212 points in 1999, but then lost on the tiebreak, has scored more than 200 championship points in a season and not won the title. Hunter Ray is checking out. Yeah, he's flying, flying over the mm -hmm. chicane. Saw him wipe his visor as he, as he came to the brake zone for that back chicane. And Manning is not pulling away from Jimmy, so maybe Manning doesn't have the speed of Ryan Hunter Ray. Just that, that, 22 years of age. That was a great move by Manning, Tommy. That was a great opportunistic move with so few laps to go to slice down the inside. Manning a half second quicker than Hunter Ray, but still 3.6 seconds behind. I read that wrong. A half a second slower than Hunter Ray which is why he's now 3.6 seconds right. behind. How about that? Well, if Ryan Hunter Ray can hold on for another lap and a half, he'll become the 13th different winner in as many runnings of this race and the eighth different driver to win a race in 2003. Seen a lot of reliability problems with the American Spirit cars this year. Pardon? <laughs> Come on. Huh? Everybody in Boca Raton will whack you on the back of the head if you said that. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, Vassar flew. Vassar flew at mid-Ohio and made a mistake. Potentially could have won the race, but Ryan Hunter Ray had a great weekend there. But the raw speed Ryan Hunter Ray showed in Mexico 
to me was his signature of this season before today. And it's starting in Miami, he had a new engineer, an engineer, David Brown, who came from Penske and before that, or no, from Williams, Williams. Formula One. That's right, ran the McLaren Formula 3000 team uh, when that was a driver development program and then went to the Jordan Formula One team before he came here. Wow, what a, what a, what a weekend this could be. White flag is out for Ryan Hunter Ray. Whoa! Okay, that lap, he was a second slower, so now it's 2.6 seconds, but he's got 2.6 seconds to give back over 2.7 miles. To be a 22-year-old rookie and win your first champ car race half a world away, he could not be any farther from his home in South Florida. But Manning, look, he is beginning to close in, but he's only got half a lap, a mile and a half. Raynard's one, two, three. First time for that in two seasons. And if Ryan Hunter Ray can hold on, it'll be the second year in a row for a rookie winner in this race. The first win for Stefan Johansson's American Spirit team. And he will be the second rookie to win this season after Sebastian Bourdais. Unlikely, but very much earned. With everything that was thrown at these guys today, Wow, look at him attack the chicanes, <laughs> as does Manning. It was more than Paul Tracy could handle. It was more than Bruno Jimcara could handle. And Ryan hunter Ray took everything this race could throw at him. Two more go. corners for Ryan hunter Ray. Here it is. Short straight. The right look at the fans. Yep. They know how important this is to this young rookie oh who came early to do pre-race promotional work. He's been surfing and jet skiing all week. He feels right at home, and Ryan Hunter Ray will win in Surfer's Paradise. Man, what a day. What a day for Manning also. There is David Brown right there on the left side. There's Katie Brannon, hands of the public relations. Graham Taylor, also from the Arrows Formula One team. Look at the delight bomb on his head. <laughs> Look at this. I can't believe it. What do I do now? And Jimmy gives him oh. a big thumbs up. A Reynard 1-2-3. And a rookie 1-2. And there is Michael Benelli of Players, no longer a sponsor after the new legislation, but still a half owner of PF Racing. Oh, my. The surprises this race has thrown up over the years. That is Tess Brilia, the girl with the long hair. You just saw her there. Canadian girl, she changes the left front on Ryan Hunter Ray's car. I wonder if she did that this weekend, because a couple of races ago she hurt herself. She was on crutches at the racetrack. One of the other teammates had to take over. As you look at Darren Manning, by far his best performance of the year as well. What a day. What a day. What a, lump, what a bunch of storylines. Now, can Ryan do uh, donuts? Has he ever practiced them? <laughs> Remember, Zanardi did donuts on this track. That's you, right. You don't think you could do them on street circuits? He's got to let some of those guys go by first. Look at this. Wow. Love to see it. Mm -hmm. His dad has been such a supporter of Ryan Hunter Ray, supported his Atlantic program. Come up through the cart ladder system. Struggled early in the season. Ah, oh, here we go. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, did he crash? I think he crashed. I, he, he did. did. He did. He crashed. What? <laughs> no, he's okay. Yeah, or okay. did he just rip <laughs> advertising off the wall? I think, I think he got into the tires. I think he did. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, I, I was about enough. to say, he came from 12th on the grid to win. <laughs> That's the farthest back a winner has come from this season. And how about Paul Tracy? <laughs> that was not the start of an official donut, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> That was more of a pie in the face than <laughs> the other kind of pastry. <laughs> Paul Tracy becomes the second Canadian-born champ car titleist, the other being Jacques Villeneuve back in 1995. And if you believe the rumors, it's not out of the question that Villeneuve, who does not have a ride in Formula One next year, may be taking another look at champ cars after all. Looks like he's in a hurry now to get to victory lane. Here we go. Let's see what happens. Yeah. 
No. Is it? Is it? I think. Oh, oh yeah, he away lost from it. Him. He lost it. Oh, <laughs> the grass was there. But what is that that he ripped up? He got a piece of the banner. Is that a banner, is it? Okay, gives it a bootful. Oh. Now realizes, uh-oh, this is embarrassing. I should have practiced this. Okay, there yeah, he tears the banner off the wall, I think. Oh, how embarrassing <laughs> that might have been. <laughs> Stefan will have a, a bill waiting for him. Look at this here. Look at this here. He goes over to, he goes over to see Jimmy. Jimmy. Year team. There's Rick Rice, our cameraman on the right side. There's Tess right there, Tess Brilia. Doesn't have the crutches. Good. Uh, she's there to see her driver, Ryan Hunter Ray. What about that? There's Graham Taylor, the white shirt, he's the engineer. Katie Brannan handles all the public relations. We'll have the video Rick Rice is shooting for us next week at California Speedway. And there is the Vanderbilt Cup being hoisted by a very emotional Paul Tracy. He's in tears. Chris Pook, CEO of the series, comes over. What a fight this has been for Paul. Tommy, you've been close to him all year long. This is a man who's overcome by emotion right now. He's been climbing all the all-time list. Pole wins, laps left, but he has never been better than the job they did. championship. And, you know, I just, I guess this is the way God planned it out to be. It's just I thought it was going to be a battle to the end of the season. and. I just don't know what to say. I'm just, I'm caught up and, and, and now I feel it's just an incredible heavy, feeling. Paul, it was a remarkable race, wasn't it? I mean, there was so much in that race. It could have gone either way, but at the end of the day, it's panned out in your favor and in favor of the Forsyth team. Just tremendous. Yeah, I mean, I just have to thank the team. They got the car running again. And, uh, you know, the job that they've done for me this year, Jerry Forsyth and Bob Beckson and everything that they've done for this team, you can see how happy the guys are. They've worked so long and, and I've worked so long to get to this point it's just fantastic what was going through your mind at the time when the car was you know when there was dramas with the car you're in pit lane and losing those valuable seconds I thought it was just all starting to to fall apart for us just you know things can change so quickly things can change so quickly and momentum swings in a different direction so quick I thought it was over for us and then when I saw Bruno was out I was just started to cry in my helmet. This has been an incredible year for you. I know you've waited so long to finally do this. You've had lots of success and race wins with this team. And you, you said on the radio on your way back in that you've never felt so comfortable with a race team. No, it's a, it's a great team and great guys. And I just want to thank them. Paul, enjoy. Congratulations. Here we go. Paul Tracy's last championship came in 1990. Welcome to your first victory. I feel like I'm in a dream, honestly. I, I can't even believe it. We went jet skiing together, man. <laughs> hey, we're new to the wing, man. Cooled off lap. Yeah. <laughs> How does it feel? How much confidence does that give you for the rest of the season, even though it's one more round in Fontana? Yeah, you know, to end the season off like this, this is our last road course, last street course, and uh, and we won it. It's, I, I Words can't even describe it right now. I'm, I'm on cloud nine. What about looking in your mirrors? Another rookie behind you, Manning as well. Two rookies today on the podium. On the restart, so I mean, I left him. There was no, no problem at all. It was great. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Thank you. That was Daryl Beatty with well, Network Darren Manning, 10. a brilliant second place. How does that feel? Oh, fantastic. We deserve this all year. You know, we've been so close so many times and being 14th on the grid, we just never expected anything like this. We always have a good, big cheer at the beginning of the uh, the beginning of the uh, the race to see where we're going to go and they all said top top three so uh, the boys did a good job in pit stops i made a good move and a uh, few more laps you never know we might have had ryan the geordie boy doesn't mind these sort of conditions does he <laughs> no 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 wet intermediate we i don't mind at all when it's uh, when 
it's all it's a big level when the rain comes and dries out also all right well where to from here fontana obviously but what about 2004 well yeah definitely i want to stay in car i want to be back at events like this this is just absolutely fantastic hopefully uh, the walker boys and uh, all my sponsors rac bridgestone and ford have all done a fantastic job getting me here this year hopefully we can uh, stay next year awesome result there and well thanks done thanks so much cheers mate well jimmy vassett jimmy it seems like at the end they just couldn't quite hang on to those guys with those conditions now nah, we put on a lot of wind because we knew we knew we thought it was going to rain and i was a sitting duck and we were too slow on the straightaway but uh you know i had to tell ryan to tell the team to tell ryan to calm down there when he was in front he was trying to throw it away that first time i you know, we got side by side going into one of the chicanes and i flat spotted my tire real bad and uh, from then on out it was tough but uh you know all credit to ryan did a great job today it's a great day for our american spirit team and uh you know, two cars on the podium, you know, we can't ask for better than that. For a while there, Jimmy, we thought we were going to see another Vassa, Vassa victory down under. Well, I thought so, too. The way Ryan was really getting out of shape there for a while, I think, I'm think i sure he was nervous first time leading like that. And then uh, then he settled back down, and he did a great job. You know, I'd like to, to congratulate uh, PT for his championship. You know, well-deserved. What a, what a wild race today. I mean, three, three Reynards on the podium. Who would have guessed that? Thanks, Jimmy. All right, thanks. Okay, I think our Network 10 colleagues are finished. Congratulations indeed to Paul Tracy. And as I mentioned, his last title came in the old Indy Light Series in 1990. Once again, he is a champion. Well, after one of the most dramatic and difficult races that I can remember, Ryan Hunter Ray is now the 13th different winner of the Kart Grand Prix of Australia in as many seasons. A 1-2 for Ryan Hunter Ray and fellow rookie Darren Manning, and a 1-2-3 for Reynard Chassis, with Jimmy Vassar taking the third and final spot on the podium. There is 11th through 19th. Oriel Servia going out along with Tiago Montero on the very first green flag lap. Of course, Bruno Junquera, who had hoped to take the title fight to the final race of the season next weekend in California, crashed out as well. While the post-race festivities begin, here's a look at the standings with one race remaining. 27 points is more than Paul Tracy needed to lock up his first title. How about some final thoughts, gentlemen, beginning with you, Derek Daly. Well, I can guarantee you that the Hunter Rays and Boca Raton are all screaming and shouting right now and probably will for the rest of the night because that was a superb performance. But for me to see Paul Tracy in tears shows the human side of him. And if he didn't win this championship this year, it really wouldn't have been a se season that was properly capped off. Well, and the race was kind of like that. It seemed like no one wanted to win it. but. Uh, you got to say that Paul Tracy did it his way. He never backed off. He was going for it every lap. And so I've always said he, he values that almost more than a championship. Now he's had both. He drove every lap of the season that way, and uh, it paid off in a championship. I want to thank Australian Network 10 for their assistance in bringing you the pictures from today's race. It was a very difficult race for them as well. And a quick look at our coverage plans for the final round of the Bridgestone Presents the Champ Car World Series powered by Ford qualifying here on Speed Channel 430 next Saturday. Race coverage itself live beginning at 2.30 p.m. on Sunday. Jimmy Vassar raises his trophy. The party will last long into the night. But the cars will be packed up. Teams will load themselves and their equipment onto airplanes. And they will be in California on Monday. We'll see you next weekend for another and the final race, a 500 miler. It will be exciting, but it will not decide the championship. That has already been done. And it brings the career of Paul Tracy full circle. The crowd will come to its feet. Flash bulbs popping in the grandstand. Now the big story coming into this weekend. Zipping out of its temperatures. Doing Tracy. a good job in the car. Trying to do a good job out of the car. Let's go racing. You're starting next to a guy named Paul Tracy. Do you know what a chrome horn is? Paul, Paul Tracy, Tracy, winner of the inaugural Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. That's where I wanted to start the season, and you know, I, I can't, be, can't be any happier. For the first time in 21 years, one driver will win both of the opening races of the season. The 29th Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach. 
victory to Paul Tracy. That's a message to all these naysayers down the pit lane that PT's for shizzle my nizzle. We're not curing cancer here. We're supposed to race and have some fun. I'm gonna go to the grocery store and hit the express checkout lane. There's an incurable deadly disease going up and down the pit lane. It's called wineritis. I'm gonna show Jordan who's the boss at applesauce. <laughs> My money comes in heaps and the kids love me in the streets. I just go out there and I, I do, do what I do and I, I love to do what I do and that's race the car. Paul Tracy from Toronto. You are the career win for the team, number 24 in Paul Tracy's glittering career. First ever 1-2 finish for Players Foresight. He does get the victory here in Mexico City. 13 years ago, Paul Tracy arrived in Champ Car Racing as a bespectacled prodigy from the suburbs of Toronto, the thrill from West Hill. As he crept up the all-time list in starts, wins, and laps led, there was always that one empty space in the column titled Championships. That space has now been filled. Congratulations to Paul Tracy, champion for 2003.